Hello and welcome you nine to this webinar on descriptive writing. Now we have three key takeaways or learning aims. First of all, to really understand how to engage your readers in descriptive writing. Secondly, to use sensory description and other descriptive techniques. And finally, to understand the drop zoom flash echo method in order to structure descriptive writing. Now this is for a specific assignment that is describe a cafe. Okay, this is one image of a cafe, but you wouldn't necessarily be given an image, you might just be given the title, describe a cafe. And with any descriptive writing, you need to think about adding imagination. So the first thing to engage your readers would really to be thinking about which narrative perspective would you be writing from? Would you be writing from one of the waitresses perspective? who's been tired or happy all day, or maybe the mood changes? Would you be um, um, writing from someone, a passerby who's looking into the cafe? Maybe you're writing, um, you're writing from a perspective of one of the customers who's there. Maybe it's a birthday celebration or a family lunch or a business lunch. You can, you can describe from any perspective. You can also think about using Th sorry, from any first person perspective, you can also think about using third person. Omniscient means all knowing. So that means that you could describe from one person, perhaps the grandma and then the granddaughter and then the aunt and then someone else and the waiter and the owner. So lots of different people's perspectives there. So you have an omniscient overview. Another way of engaging a reader is really thinking about your purpose. So as the author as the writer you have an intention or an intent you have something that you want to do now your purpose could be to evoke strong feelings and to enable readers to experience the scene you could also think about making it really exciting and thrilling and entertaining so everything you describe it has an element of thrill and excitement you could try an opposite purpose that actually that you use description that's disquieting and disturbing and unsettling and everything you describe is actually having an element of mystery or something that's um, that's upsetting even or you could use your description to present and explore serious issues so for example you could look at the idea of poor diet and how it affects our mood so maybe they're sat eating at the, cafe, at the cafe really unhealthily and then their mood is affected somehow. You may even think about using the cafe um, description scenario to look at inequality, how some people at one table can barely afford to eat and others at a different table eat um, order a huge amount, eat very little and waste the rest. So you could use your description for lots of different purposes and you need to think about what your intent or your purpose is. The purpose today will be A, I want us to evoke or I would like to show you how to evoke strong feelings and enable readers to really experience the scene as if they are actually there. Now this is the scene, uh, the picture, so you could think right, um, to engage my reader, I want to think about these thoughts and feelings. So as well as describing the mood, the feeling, the atmosphere, the environment, the place, you can also describe thoughts and feelings. You can zoom into different characters. You can think about different objects. You can think about the background and the foreground and really start getting some ideas of how to engage your reader. Now let's talk about descriptive techniques. Now, first descriptive technique is really sensory description. That is obviously describing through the five senses. So more accurate terminology would be auditory description for hearing, visual description for sight, tactile description for touch, gustatory description for taste, and olfactory description for smell. So they're more accurate than just talking about hearing, sight, touch and taste. But you really want to think about whether you're going to repel or attract your readers, whether that, when the, what you hear is really repulsive or really attractive. What you see, is it really repulsive or is it really attractive? So you really have to think, I'm describing through the five senses, but I want to add this element of repulsion or this element of attraction to these different aspects of the description. 
So here you could pause the webinar and you could think about all of these different words for hearing and smell and touch and taste and sight and colour. Here I have an example where I've tried to use sensory description effectively. So I've written pristine crystal glasses chinked and their happy clink reverberated around the crowded bistro. The powdery aroma of freshly baked pastry was mingled with the smoky bitterness of freshly brewed cappuccino. Rough and scratchy splinters on the antique tables were covered with the smooth cotton tablecloths. Clanging and jostling, the metal wheels of the waitress's trolley eventually came to a halt as she handed out steaming bowls of hot, wriggly pasta, the colour of russet and terracotta. So you can see in that paragraph, I've tried to appeal to all the five senses. So the sense of hearing is there with the chinking and clinking of glasses, with the clanging and jostling of metal wheels. So you really get that sense that some of it is really attractive, the clinking and the chinking, that sense of joy and celebration, but also perhaps repulsive the uh, um, clanging and the jostling of the wheels approaching. I've also tried to appeal to that sense of smell, olfactory description with the aroma of freshly baked pastry and the smoky bitterness of freshly brewed espresso. Now, the sense of smell and the sense of taste, decostory and olfactory are really interrelated. So the things that are smelling smoky and bitter you can always smell smell and taste them at the same time i've also tried to appeal to the sense of sight with the wriggly pasta the color of russet and terracotta and also the sense of touch with the scratchy splinters but they've been covered by the smooth cotton of the tablecloth so you can see in one paragraph you can try and really pack your description richly with all five senses. Another important descriptive technique is indirect description or show don't tell. So instead of stating something obviously or explicitly, she was feeling incredibly nervous, you give specific details so that it's implicit in the description. Her frail hands were shaking and trembling, her entire body was convulsing uncontrollably with shivers. So you could use this for your cafe description. So you could say, a woman tried to eat her food carefully without staining her white top. And that's a fun description. It's adding some humour because as well as enjoying her food, she's also trying to look neat and tidy, possibly for a business meeting. But instead of just stating it, obviously, let's add some really specific details of what exactly she's doing to try not to make a mess of herself. Nibbling the crumbly edges of dessert with beet like pecks. One woman squashed tiny scraps of cake on the edge of her silver knife with the pristine precision of a surgeon holding a surgical tool. Barely breathing, she lifted her chin and her tongue unraveled as she nudged the minuscule morsel into her quivering lip. Triumphant, she gazed down with pride at the immaculately white silk blouse which remained spotless. So can you see you're really telling with specific detail how she's kind of nibbling the cake, these bird-like pecks, tiny scraps of cake cut up like a surgeon and she's kind of unraveling her tongue and just kind of slipping the cake in and then checking on her blouse with pride. She didn't mess it up. Okay, so can you see how effective show rather than just telling can be when you're adding that specific detail and you're adding a real sense of humour and joy, particularly if you're wanting your reader to experience the scene. What about the one, the next one here, a child refused to eat, that happens doesn't it, in restaurants. Someone said that restaurants and children don't always mix. A child refused to eat would be a really interesting thing to include in your description but how could you really show that the child is refusing rather than just telling us the child is refusing to eat well you could write something like this with hunched shoulders and a bowed head and resistant arms crossed defiantly across her angry puffed out chest 
a child ignored the pleading of her cajoling mother and sat staring at the toy in her lap rather than looking at the disgusting food before her. Okay, can you see what she's doing? She's refusing, she's hunching her shoulders, she's puffing out her chest, she's crossing her arms, she's looking at her toy, she's ignoring her mother, all of those different things that she's doing rather than just stating it, we're describing in specific detail. And what about this last one? A passerby was jealous of the cafe customers. So a pair of eyes fixed into, onto an envelope of bread cut open to reveal spicy and enticing contents. As she followed the plate without blinking, her mouth began to water and she licked her lips. You can see she's really jealous. She wants to eat that delicious envelope that's spilling out with spicy contents. Now let's take that passerby who's jealous and let's really think about adding triple A, which is what I call another descriptive technique. Let's add adjectives, which describe nouns, adverbs, which describe verbs, and alliteration, the same sound at the beginning of words. Furtively, a pair of bright eyes were fixed on the fluffy envelope of bread, cut open to reveal spicy, savory contents. As she followed the mesmerizing plate, barely blinking, her envious mouth began to water and she licked her lips greedily. And when she'd finished eyeing up the appetizing plate, she, place, she grimaced angrily at the customers who looked so self-satisfied and slovenly. You can see there that real sense of envy and jealousy. as She's eyeing those up, trying not to be seen so furtively and greedily and angrily. You can see that she's trying not to let people see that she's really looking um, enviously at the food. So that's using AAA to really extend and develop our writing. That could be the jealous customer, who knows? Uh, sorry, the jealous passerby looking at the customers. Now, another way of adding descriptive detail is through figurative language or what I call mopes. So you could add a metaphor, a nest of spaghetti writhed and squirmed on the plate. So it's almost as if they're alive the murmured mumbling of casual babbling buzzed across the side street. So you've got all that onomatopoeia of that, you know, when you hear people talking and you can't make out any of the words, but they're mumbling and bumbling and babbling and murmuring and buzzing all around. You've got the personification. So I wanted to personify the cash registers because it's so busy. They're almost singing in celebration because they're making a lot of money and the afternoon takings are really high. So the, the uh, passers-by, they heard the excited clang of joyous clash registers jubilating, jubilantly ringing out and ringing open in celebration of the busy afternoon's taking. So really personifying that singing cash register. And then exaggeration, 10 million hungry diners scoured the bustling brasseries in search of gourmet meals. Obviously it wasn't 10 million, it's exaggeration. And you also have this sense that I don't want to keep saying cafe, I don't want to keep saying bistro, so I've used the word brasseries to vary the vocabulary. And then for simile, this frustrated child is sitting like a caged kitten, ready to lash out at anyone who threatened to approach her. So you've got more descriptive detail there and different descriptive techniques to use to make your writing effective. Okay, for the last part of this webinar, I really want us to talk about how you would structure the whole thing. So you know that you need to engage your readers with first or third person and think about your purpose and you know that you need to engage your reader with descriptive technique, sensory description, AAA and mopes and show don't tell. But what about putting the whole thing together? How would you structure the whole piece? How would you start? How would you develop and how would you finish? Well, this is a really helpful technique called drop, zoom, flash and echo. So when you drop, at the opening you go straight into the action you go straight into the atmosphere it's something active something lively something interesting that really hooks your reader in and it makes them want to read on that's the drop the beginning 
Then you zoom, you zoom into specific elements. You might zoom into the food, you might zoom into faces, to particular characters, to particular aspects and details. Then you would flash. Now, the flash is a transition. It could be a flashback, but it's really to provide the opposite tone, a different mood, a different feeling, a different focus. You're flashing away from the main action. Why? Well, it's really showing your teacher that you are a skilled writer because you can add contrast to your writing. And what about the echo? Well, you're returning to the scene at the what was started at the beginning. So you're creating a cyclical structure going back to something that you referred to earlier. And those are the four sections to help you write the whole piece. You've got drop, you've got zoom, you've got flash, you've got echo. You may be familiar with this, you may have helped, you may have, it may have helped you to write, but what would it look like for this specific assignment? Well, you'd have a narrative hook. So you'd hook us in, you'd zoom in to different aspects of the scene, and then you'd use contrast really to show that you are a skilled writer. You want to show your skills and your skill as a writer. So for this specific assignment, you would drop into the sights, the smells, the sounds of the street and the cafe. And then you would zoom in, you'd zoom into the customers, you'd zoom into the children, the passersby, every, passers everyone who's kind of enjoying the lively and bustly atmosphere of the cafe and its surroundings. Then your flash would be a contrast. You could present an unhappy and frustrated child, maybe the child who didn't want to eat and was refusing to eat. And then your echo, you'd go back to the smells and the sounds and the sights of the cafe. OK, what would it look like then? So your assignment may well look something like this. So we'd use the sensory description that we used at the beginning. Pristine crystal glasses clinked and their happy chink reverberated around the crowded bistro. And then so you describe the powdery aroma of the pastry, the bitter smokiness of the espresso, how the rough splinters have been covered with a smooth tablecloth, the clanging, the jolting, and the steaming wriggly bowl of russet and terracotta pasta. So the drop there would really drop us into the excitement and the liveliness and how delicious the food and the ex wonderful the experience of this cafe is. Then the zoom, you'd be zooming in, possibly zooming into this woman who has this beautiful top and she's trying not to ruin it. So she's nibbling the crumbly edges with bird-like pecs. She's squashing it like a surgeon with precise stabs. She's lifting her chin and unraveling her tongue and nudging it over her lip and she's gazing down proudly the fact that she her blouse remains spotless okay so that could be the zoom zooming into one particular customer and then in contrast the frustrated child sat like a caged kitten ready to lash out at anyone who threatened to approach us we've got a contrast of this angry child who's refusing to listen refusing to eat unlike everyone around everyone is around is interested in the smells and the tastes and the delights of all the food in this cafe but she is refusing to eat and the food is disgusting and can you see that i've used speech marks here to give it her voice but also this kind of irony that it's not disgusting it's just because her palate perhaps is underdeveloped and inexperienced she can't enjoy the food like the rest of the customers maybe the adult customers and then the end is going back it's echoing the murmuring the mumbling the hungry diners they're scouring and then the clang of the joyous tills ringing out in celebration because of the busy afternoon's takings so can you see how you could use drop, zoom, flash and echo to structure your writing into four sections that interrelate with each other? OK, I hope that has helped you. I hope that after this webinar, you'll go back and you'll do your own writing. I hope that you can use auditory visual 
tactile gustatory and olfactory description. You can use AAA and MOCs, show don't tell, and the drop zoom flash echo to structure your writing to create a successful descriptive piece. Thank you for joining me, Year Nine, and goodbye.